This is Twit. I'm going to get my car, and I'm going to drive along with Sam Abul Samit. He's the car guy, researcher at, uh, analyst at uh, Navigant Research. He joins us every week. He's our newest member of the Tech Guy team to talk about cars. Hey, Sam. Hey, Leo. How are you this I'm week? I'm great. It's freezing in the Motor City, I hear. Yeah, it's it's a it's a little bit uh, chilly. It's, it's about thirteen <laughs> degrees here today. Yikes! Uh, supposed to supposed to have a high on Tuesday of about minus four. So, but then it's going to warm up after that. I th it, you said we should talk today about self driving vehicles. There's a lot of confusion, and Tesla, by the way, did not help this by calling their what is what is really a driver assist autopilot. It isn't an autopilot. It doesn't. Well, you know it. Actually, if you you know if you actually look at what autopilot systems and aircraft do, it's actually not that far off from what oh, okay. autopilot systems do because those are actually pilot assist systems. They're not self flying systems. But people assume uh, when they hear autopilot that they can go to sleep and let the car drive, which is a very bad idea. Which is unfortunate, you know, and it's unfortunate that we've seen a lot of videos on YouTube yeah. and, and other places of uh, owners, primarily of Teslas, but occasionally of some other stuff, you know, people, you know, taking a nap or climbing into the back seat and doing oh, no. doing things that they shouldn't Don't be do doing. Don't do that. Right. In fact, Tesla so, is really pretty aggressive in their in their software. It's about checking to see if your hands are on the wheel and making you tap the wheel every once in a while. Well, I, they've they've gotten more aggressive as sure there have. have been more issues. You know, people getting into crashes because they haven't been paying attention. Right. So that's what I wanted to talk a little bit about was the difference between. Driver assist systems and automate, you know, full automated driving or highly automated driving, um, and you know the Society of Automotive Engineers, of which I've been a member for more than thirty years, um, is you know the, one of the things that they do is they define, you know, they they define standards, industry standards uh, for all kinds of things, you know, various test procedures, you know, the the way that manufacturers, for example, test towing ratings. Uh, you know, so so you can compare everything, you know, side by side. And one of the things they did a few years back is they defined a, a taxonomy or a language for um, automated driving. And you know, you you know, a lot of people probably heard of the you know these six levels of driving from level zero, which is you know like my car, my my 1990 Miata that has no driver assist features; it's all manual. Uh, up up through level five, which is a fully automated vehicle that can drive anywhere, anytime. Uh, under any conditions, and uh, which doesn't actually exist, and probably won't exist for a, a long time to come. So, what? Are, so, what's the best you can get right now? Was is like that Cadillac CTS you took me for a ride in? Yeah. So that's that's what we call a level, you know, kind of a level two system. You know, part of the problem is the the way those this, those levels are defined is a little vague, and it, it, they're kind of broad. But that's what we call a partially automated system. So where, it does a couple of things. It it yeah. will it will do lane keeping. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll steer the car. You can, you you can actually in this case, uh, it's looking at your eyes, <laughs> not your hands. Yeah. So uh, on the Cadillac, so you you can keep your hands off the wheel. You can sit there with your hands folded, but you need to watch the road, and it, it will alert you. It'll vibrate you pretty vigorously. If you're not watching the road, it, vi it vibrates your seat. Yeah, and, and it also starts <laughs> flashing a light bar in the top of the steering wheel. It will uh, keep. It will do um, uh, this newer kind of cruise control where it slows down and stops if the car in front of you slows down and stops, and then it'll pick up again if the car moves again. I find that my I do that in my Tesla. It's great for stop and go driving. Yeah, that and that's that's called adaptive cruise control, and Love it uses that. a radar sensor in the front of the car that measures the the distance and the closing speed to the car in front of you. And so when you, you know, in the old days, you know, you'd set your cruise control to 70 miles an hour or whatever, whatever the speed was. And, you know, the car would just try to maintain that speed. Yeah. Uh, regardless of what was going on around it. And then, you know, in the last 15 years, they've gotten smarter and they added the these radar sensors to detect that distance to the car ahead of you. So now when the car ahead of you slows down, your the adaptive cruise will automatically slow you down. And that's what we call a level one system. I like where, that. It maintains a yeah. stop. Safe stopping distance at all times, no matter what your speed. Um, what it won't do is stop at a stoplight. Um, right, yeah, it won't stop at stoplights. So it does. It's not reading traffic signals, um, you know. But it, it's it's following the, the the car in front of you. So if right. there's nobody in front of you, then it's just going to continue to try to control it at whatever speed you set. And so systems that control just one function, like either the speed or the steering. Uh, you know, for like lane keeping assist systems, those are level one systems. 
When you combine two of those together, that becomes a level two system. That's what the Cadillac CT6 has with its Super Cruise. That's what Autopilot does and uh, systems from a number of other manufacturers like Volvo's Pilot Assist. Those are level two systems, but they're not designed to drive on their own. They're they're designed to for the driver to still be engaged. You still have to be ready to, to take over control at any moment because these systems are not, not perfect. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That, the, the sensors, you know, are are still limited in their functionality, and they can't they can't do everything. So you now um, you still have to be paying attention. I think and if you understand thing, that, your it actually is very useful. I feel I'm oh, yeah, safer uh, when I use that autopilot. As long as I pay attention, I'm safer than if I didn't have it. It really helps me drive better. I think. Right, and the thing the thing that Tesla. Actually, pretty much everybody in the industry up until now has done differently from what Cadillac is doing is the way they figure out if the driver is still there paying attention is there's there's a steering angle sensor in the wheel and it's looking for slight motions. You know, when your hands are on the wheel, there's always a little bit of motion there. You're never completely still. So it's looking for that motion uh, to decide, you know, determine if you're still paying attention. Uh, and unfortunately, that's not always necessarily a very good indicator. You know, if, if you actually do hold your hands fairly still, a lot of times it'll give you a false positive. Um, and yeah. so you end up getting these alerts that don't you don't need to get because I get them you're, all you're the still time. It's, kind of, it's almost annoying, but it's still again, I think it's safer. Now, the Tesla does something uh, unusual, which is if you want, it will change lanes for you. All you have to do is hit the turn signal. It'll it look and see if it's clear although my experience is it's not perfect you still want to look and then yeah. it'll change lanes for you um is it does the cadillac do that too the the cadillac doesn't do that right now and that's that's what we refer to as auto lane change um one other brand that does do that right now uh is mercedes-benz uh on their intelligent drive system so both the, the tesla and the mercedes you tap the steering wheel and it uses the sensors on the side of the car to to look uh, to see if there's anybody in the adjacent lane on whichever direction. So if you want to change lanes to the left, it'll look to your left uh, using the blind sp the blind spot sensors. And if it's all clear, then it will automatically steer the car into the adjacent lane and then you know try to so track that start tracking that new lane. The technologies these cars use are, are cameras, as you mentioned, radar, and then uh, some self-driving vehicles use lidar. Are there any production mm -hmm. cars that use lidar? There is one uh, one production uh, model right now that is, has LiDAR, but it's not really being used yet, and that's the new Audi A8. They tend uh, to be very expensive LiDAR, and it's making a yeah. 3D image of everything around the vehicle. So uh, I think a lot of people believe LiDAR is, is the best way to do uh, autonomous self-driving it, it's it's one it's generally believed to be one of the three key components and, yeah. and actually there's increasingly moves towards adding a fourth which is infrared and thermal imaging night night vision mm. uh, and you see which people can, and animals yeah, which is very yeah helpful. to help you detect live live objects yeah. um you know so you know each of the, each of the different kinds of sensors whether it's lidar radar cameras um they all have different strengths and weaknesses and so you want to what what engineers try to do is use them together with a little bit of overlap, so you have redundancy. So you know, radar is good for seeing through fog and and mist, which cameras can't do, and lidar kind of struggles with. Uh, but it doesn't get you know, radar won't give you a really high definition. Or right. At least current radars won't give right. you a high definition view of what's around. Sam uh, Abul Simit, it is so great to talk to you. Uh, we will talk again next week. Navigant Research. Have a great uh, day, and is there anywhere we can read more about your stuff? Where do you publish? Uh, I publish some stuff on uh, Forbes. You can find my you know, occasional articles on there. Okay. I have a podcast uh, called Wheel Bearings at wheelbearings.media.